If you're seeing the ultralight rods buying guide first, keep in mind that I also released the ultralight reels buying guide. I'm gonna leave that video in the description below. If you're looking for a reel, feel free to check it out. Okay, so here is the plan for this video. I'm just gonna go through all of the rods that I like and recommend in ascending price order. So if you're not interested in 20 and 30 dollar rods, just skip further down the video to the price range that uh, you're interested in. Okay, the cheapest rod that I absolutely love and recommend to anybody on budget is the Shakespeare Micro. I have a full review of this rod that I encourage you to watch, but this is a lot more than a you know, rod for beginners or a rod for people who absolutely can't afford anything more expensive. Yeah, it has a basic handle and basic steel guides, but somehow Shakespeare found the perfect blank for this rod. And if you get the right action, you can do anything with this rod. You can twitch a trout magnet, you can float fish, you can cast swim baits, you can do anything. And amazingly enough, this rod is even kind of sensitive for the price range. For example, later I'm going to talk about the Okuma SST special edition that I also love and recommend. And it's a lot more expensive than this rod, but that Okuma rod is less sensitive than this Shakespeare Microlite. So make no mistake, by some miracle, this rod has enormous value and you can really fish any way you want with it. Careful with the actions though, because some of the actions for this rod are no good. For example, all of these long ultralight actions are no good. 7 foot ultralight is too wobbly. Guys, you know I like soft rods, you know I like slow action, slow recovery, I don't mind. If I tell you a rod is too soft and too wobbly, it's no good. So here is what you need. For twitching a trout magnet, the perfect rod is 6 foot 6 light. Not ultra light, but light. The true power is light. You can also cast a small swim baits with that rod. Another really uh, good action is the 7 foot light. You can use this for float fishing if you don't fish very deep or for swim baits from the bank if you need the extra distance. And another really good uh, rod that I also tested is the 5 foot 6 light. This one if you're fishing small streams and you need to cast under brush or you just want a shorter rod to have fun, uh, also very good action. Now I'm going to make one more comment about this rod because I really love this rod and I don't like when people bash it. On every website, when you read the reviews about this rod, you will see people complain about tips breaking. And I want you to understand correctly what's happening here. This is a $20 rod. That's the full price. Sometimes you can get it even cheaper when it's on sale. $20 rods are transported in bulk. They're hitting each other, nicking each other during transportation. And then when you see them in Walmart, they are really bunched up like 50 of them in a small compartment and really a lot of damage is done just during transportation and handling in the store. The other thing you have to consider is who is buying these rods? Okay, who buys $20 rods? It's not people with, you know, higher education that make 200000 a year. It's people on budget. Something that I saw when I moved here in Tennessee is fishing rods hanging out of the bed of a pickup. And guess what's hanging? Only the tip of the rod. Only the top three, four guides of the rod are hanging out. The rest of the rod is inside the truck bed. Well, where is this rod tip resting? Right on the truck bed. People are transporting. The people who buy this rod usually transport them and treat them like total trash and then, then they go back to Walmart and return them and they leave negative reviews. So you can get a rod too that the tip will break just because it was uh, nicked uh, during transportation. I promise you if the tip breaks it will break immediately. If that happens just hang on to your receipt for the first month or so. If it happens just go get a new one. 
No need to get frustrated because I'll tell you, out of this whole video, no other rod offers such value per dollar as this rod right here. Okay. My next favorite rod is the Crappy Max from Bass Pro Shops, but I have to start going faster through these rods because I already spent 5 minutes on the first rod and I wanna, you know, include at least 15 rods in this video, at least a dozen, so I I'm gonna be going a lot faster than this. This rod is only $29 and offers exactly the same value or at least almost the same value as the Shakespeare Micro. The only uh, action or model that I recommend is the 6'6 six six light. Um, it says light, but the true power is ultra light. And luckily, 6'6 six six is the perfect, the absolutely perfect length for everything. This rod is, I, I have to repeat almost everything that I said about the Shakespeare Micro. Uh, the only difference between the two rods is the bending curve of the blank. The Shakespeare Micro it has a little bit faster action and a little bit sharper tip. So for twitching a trout magnet, I would probably prefer the Shakespeare Micro. But make no mistake, this is not a wobbly rod, I promise you. You can twitch a trout magnet just fine. But the, the reason I really love this rod is the really parabolic uh, bend of the curve without being wobbly. This is very difficult to have very, very parabolic bend without having a wobbly rod. So the perfect application for this rod is casting 2 inch kitex or those of you who cast a small spinner baits. I hate these things because all they do is uh, snag everywhere and twist my line. But if you love them, that rod be, would be absolutely ideal. So yeah, the perfect application for this rod in my uh, opinion is casting uh, ultralight moving baits. And next is the Daiwa Presso, the legendary Daiwa Presso. Who doesn't know about my love with Daiwa Presso? That's my really first true ultralight love. And I can't believe that this rod still starts at $59 after all of the money that our government printed in the last two years, the money, the M2 money supply expanded by 40% in just two years. And the price of this Daiwa Presso is almost unchanged. I remember at one point I, I bought one of them for $45 on Amazon, but that was four years ago. And I will take, you know, Daiwa has never given me not even a thank you letter for this, but I think my video is the reason for this rod to be sold out for four years straight. And Daiwa finally started making more of it and the rod is coming back in stock, except the models that I recommend. Very curiously, Everybody knows I recommend the 6'6 six six for casting swim bait. It's, <clears throat> it's out of stock. And then I recommend the 7'6 and the 8' foot for float fishing. And they are out of stock too, but not everywhere. This is here, but Google, I promise you will find them. In a pinch, you can work with the 7 footer just fine. You can twitch a trout magnet. Okay, it's a little wobbly for trout magnet, but you can still do it. But you can definitely cast a swim baits with a seven footer. And if you fish shallow or with a slip float, you can float fish with the seven footer too. But if you Google this year, I bought a spare seven foot six and a spare eight footer. If you Google, you will find this rod uh, in stock in all of the actions these days. The 7 foot 6 and the 8 foot models that are absent here right now are the best float fishing rods in the whole world at any price in my opinion. The Japanese, they make great rods but they don't know what float fishing is and they make very different 8 footers and 7 foot 6. If you find at all a 7 foot 6 rod in Japan that is ultra light, it's gonna be very stiff in the middle, 
to avoid the wobbliness and the first half of the rod will be light power and then a softer tip and they're gonna call it ultra light but it's not gonna have the nice deep bend of this Daiwa Presso here so until somebody else makes uh, something with this kind of action this Presso will be the king of float fishing but luckily enough it's only $59 or starts at $59 okay my next favorite rod is actually a review that I did just like a month ago maybe two months ago but feel free to check it out this is the Okuma SST special edition I only recommend the 7 foot light the true power is ultra light you're gonna see all of that in the uh, review of this rod this rod has two features that need to be pointed out first of all it has very expensive very nice guides for a 69 dollar rod and second of all it has extremely parabolic action even more parabolic than the Daiwa Presso and when I did the review I thought that this is strictly uh, casting a swimming bait rod once you cut the handle a little bit it becomes 6 foot 8 which is again perfect length for casting a swim bait uh, and I already mentioned but this rod is definitely not sensitive it's very glassy feeling rod um, I love by the way the glassy feel of the rod and the guides are they're not the thinnest so not a sensitive rod definitely not even in a pinch you're gonna cast a trout magnet with this thing I thought it was strictly swim bait I absolutely love it for swim bait but just two days ago I did my first trout fishing session here in uh, Tennessee and I was float fishing with this rod because this river is not even a river it's only knee deep so I was float fishing but extremely shallow I didn't want my long presso rods when I'm you know fishing so shallow so I tried this rod for float fishing and oh my god it's absolutely amazing for float fishing too provided that you don't need the length of the presso because the presso comes in 8 foot and you get longer reach and this is only 7 foot don't buy the, don't buy the bigger lengths the bigger lengths 9 and 10, 10 foot those are trolling rods this is a trolling rod too but you can use it for the purposes I tell you but the 7 footer oh my god you know float fishing for trout with this rod was amazing I love trout you know they're beautiful fish but you know how they love to trash they absolutely trash they trash around the bank they trash on the bank they trash everywhere I hate ha handling uh, trout trout and skipjack are such a such a mess to handle but this rod oh my god it kills and absorbs trout trash probably better than anything else that I own this glassy feel this blank just absorbs this trashing of the trout perfectly so I, I recommend it for that purpose too if, if you buy it for swim baits keep in mind you can also use it for float fishing uh, shallow because of the large guides they're just good for everything you can run six pound line these guides will cast anything that you need okay let's look at some faster action rods now because I know most people don't like I love parabolic action rods but I realize most people dislike them because parabolic means kind of means a little bit wobbly in the middle not much but it's never gonna be as sharp as a you know fast action rod and if you want to twitch a trout magnet if that's your thing that's my thing too you need a faster action rod for that and you also need a little bit of sensitivity it's not like swim bait where you just reel in you don't care for sensitivity that much I think that probably the best rod under a hundred dollars that you can buy in United States is BNM's TCB rod. This stands for trout, crappie, and bluegill, I believe. Uh, this rod 
it has it has a very comfortable handle it has sharp enough uh, tip and it's decently sensitive um, it has only one action here in fish uh, usa but this is precisely the the model that i recommend the six foot six ultralight so if you are looking for a trout magnet rod under a hundred dollars and you want to buy it from united states this here is probably your best bet I hate to bring AliExpress crap in this video, but I do have a full review of this rod, so I'm just gonna mention it here, and if you're interested, go and watch the full review. I'm gonna leave a link to the review, and I'm gonna leave a link to the AliExpress uh, seller, actually, if you're interested. But I have to admit, this rod has very nice components for the price. It looks very nice, it feels super nice in the handle, it has very tight blank, absolutely zero wobble, perfect for twitching a trout magnet, but at the same time it's not stiff, if you want to use it for casting swim baits, it can do that too, it bends uh, deep enough, I think you can use the other spinning models as well, I hate recommending AliExpress crap, but that's a good rod, I reviewed it, I'll offer it here and you decide for yourself. A great American alternative to the queuing Teton rod is the Temple Fork Outfitters Trout and Panfish rod. Subscribers have told me about this rod for years, but somehow I never bought it. But the other day, by the way, I don't know why it's $110. This rod has a different price in every website. So I recommend you Google around to find the best price. I've seen it as low as $80. But I myself saw it and played around with it at Sportsman Warehouse here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And I was absolutely amazed by how beautiful this rod is. I mean, it's hard to tell here in the pictures, but the green color, the bright, these guides are like shiny chrome. I hate chrome, but this is, this is nice, shiny, not chrome. I don't know how to describe it. Perhaps more like shiny silver. This rod is absolutely gorgeous. Just maybe I will buy it even though I, I don't need another hundred dollar rod with steel guides. Um, I feel I want to buy this rod just to have it in my collection. It's an absolute piece of beauty. Trust you me. If I tell you this rod is pretty, it's pretty. I only liked the 6'6 six six model. It's, it's good for everything. It has no wobble. You can twitch a trout magnet. But it's not exactly sh sharp, ship, uh, a sharp tip or super fast action. It bends very deep when you put pressure. You can do uh, swim baits with it. You can do anything with these baits. I tell you, don't buy from uh, AliExpress, even though on paper the queuing Teton rod has, has nicer guides. It has more expensive blank for sure. And it has more expensive real seat too. But when you hold them in your hand, they feel just the same. By the way, this queuing teton on paper very expensive components, but it's not that sensitive. This cannot compare with any Japanese rod I have ever touched. So have no illusions that in AliExpress you can buy for a hundred dollar a rod that feels like the Japanese. They say 40 whatever 40 ton uh, blank nonsense. This rod feels absolutely numb compared to any Japanese rod, any JDM rod, okay, any $300 Japanese rod uh, that I have owned. So in terms of sensitivity and feel in the hand, the paper is very misleading. The two rods feel exactly the same to me. You can do both trout magnet and swim baits. If the price is not an issue for you, it's getting kind of expensive, but I will say one thing. I prefer this rod, the Temple Fork Outfitters, over any of the St. Croix 
panfish and trout and crappie rods. All of those cheap rods under $200 from St. Croix, I don't like them. They feel super weird. I don't know what's with St. Croix. I love the brand. And I'm going to talk about the Legend Elite Panfish Rod in a second. But I would rather buy this rod here over anything from St. Croix under $200. Folks, now I'm gonna jump straight to the $350 range for two reasons. First, the video is already 20 minutes long. And second, I just don't have much experience in the price range from $100 to $300. I think I've owned only two rods in that price range and both of them were bad experience. And I'm gonna tell you one thing, if you can't afford $350 for one of these Japanese rods, just look for something else from Japan but cheaper. The two brands I can uh, recommend in that price range are Daiwa and Major Craft. Both of them have some good rods. The one thing you should not do is buy the ultralight model of a bass rod. Don't do that. Those ultralight rods always feel like crap. Don't do this mistake. Buy a designated ultralight rod. Now here is the St. Croix Legend Elite Panfish. I have a full review of this rod, so please check it out if you're interested. But I bought this rod a long time ago and I still fish it all the time. And it's one of my all-time favorite rods. I will never sell this rod. If I break it or lose it, it has 15 year warranty and I'll try to get a replacement or I'll just buy a new one. If a new model comes out, I will buy the new model. I absolutely love this rod despite what uh, Japanese rod lovers say about it. By the way, this price looks a little intimidating, but I paid only $300 for my rod. And I believe you can still buy it for approximately that amount if you can find a small shop that sells St. Croix rods. Obviously, if you are buying it online, you can't bargain. But every small shop will offer you a big discount on this rod because I believe they have some pretty big margins. And it's kind of sad that they don't sell this rod for kind of $250 only on their website no retailers so we can get a good deal there and then I would recommend it to everybody but even at this price I often recommend this rod to people in the comments for first high-end rod because this rod feels very nice feels very different and much nicer than all of the rods under a hundred dollars and at the same time, it feels normal. There is a risk that if you jump from the BNM TCB rod straight to the Abu Garcia eradicator rod, the eradicator may feel kind of stupid and more like a toy than a real rod. If you think that everybody would like an Abu Garcia eradicator, you are wrong and that's a fact. I can tell you that one of my subscribers had an eradicator and he hated it and he sold it to me for almost half the price. This is how I got my second eradicator. He said that it feels to him it feels like and I quote a toothpick. And that's why I think that this St. Croix rod is a very good transition from kind of low end rods under $100 to high end. It still feels very nice, but it's more normal. You need to watch my full review for more detail, but this rod is pretty much good for everything. There is no wobble, you can twitch a trout magnet, very deep bend, it's perfect for swim baits. Actually, this is right now my number one swim bait rod. I like this rod for swim baits more than anything else. The, the bending curve of this rod is so smooth, it's so perfectly smooth, the transition from tip to the blank is absolutely invisible. Again, the eradicator and some of some other Japanese rods, the transition is not always perfectly smooth. This rod, and it's also my only one-piece rod, it has 15-year warranty. 
It has clear coat, nice paint, stuff that JDM rods don't have. I still recommend this rod for first high-end rod and to serve as transition from cheaper rods to the $350 JDM rods. Okay, this here, for those of you who are new to my channel and see this image for the first time, is the Shimano Suare XR. I have a full review on my channel of this rod with high definition close-ups and you have to see this review if you're interested in high-end JDM rods. This rod is an absolute piece of art and again you have to see my video to understand why I'm saying this. This rod is amazing to look at and it's also absolutely amazing to hold. Once you grab this handle all other handles will seem inferior to you. I don't have time here to repeat everything I said in the review, but you're gonna need to watch the review anyway if you're interested in that rod. And that will also help you select the right model for you, depending on what you wanna do with the rod. Because this rod has a lot of models and I think they're all good. And you may be surprised, but the only other JDM rod that I can currently recommend is the Daiwa Presso Air AGS. Please note carefully, I'm recommending the Air AGS, not the Limited AGS, which is an older rod that's heavier and shorter and at the same time more expensive. The new one is cheaper and better at the same time, so make sure you get the right model. But this rod here is an absolute trout magnet twitching specialist. Again, I have a full review of this rod too. Watch the review and I think you will be impressed, even if it's me who is saying it. The reason I don't recommend any of my other JDM rods is that they're either discontinued, so what good is it recommending a rod that's discontinued? I don't want to just tease people. Or they're too short, all of the models are too short, or there is always something like that. But right now, these are the only two JDM rods that I can recommend. I want to bring your attention to something important though. While I'm very familiar with the ultralight rods that are sold in United States and cost under $100, I cannot say the same about the world, the vast world of JDM ultralight rods. I have only dipped my toes there and I'm sharing my experience with the models that I have purchased, but I am very far from being familiar with everything that's available in Japan in terms of ultralight fishing rods. I can tell you that the two rods that I'm recommending are amazing and in my opinion well worth the money, but I am far from saying that there are no other amazing rods in Japan. As a matter of fact, I am certain that there are many more amazing rods in Japan that are well worth the money. It's just that one life is not enough to try everything.